Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined all the way from Kentucky by Glenn Lundy. How are you doing, Glenn? I'm great, man. Thanks for having you on. Super excited to be here today. Yeah, and Glenn is a highly accomplished individual, a diverse range of skills and experience, a devoted husband and proud father of eight. I think we should just stop there. <laughs> that's an achievement in itself. Um, he has dedicated the past 25 years of his life to the automotive industry and built a reputation as a respected professional in the field. As an author, has written several books sharing his knowledge and expertise and a very sought after motivational speaker using his experience to inspire others and encourage others. In addition to successful career, also the founder of the 800% Elite and Automotive Club, a membership-based organization for people in the automotive space. And you host a morning show called the 800% Club, where you share insights uh, and knowledge to help people around the world unlock their full potential. And what I wanted to talk today about is, um, I've had many conversations with people about how how we start our day and a lot of people like what do we start our day with we grab our phone we look at news sites whatever you're and wherever you sit on the political spectrum your news site is there to provoke you not to inform you so you just <laughs> no doubt <laughs> yeah or you go on social media and you go oh you know i've got a hard day ahead of me and look at glenn glenn looks like he's having the best life ever so i'm already <laughs> i'm already in a bad mood before my day's even started so um i've talked to a lot of people about this but glenn has actually a whole um, philosophy and thought a lot about how you start your day. So maybe just starting off, Glenn, should it go back? When did you first discover the importance of your morning routine? Yeah, you mentioned uh, you mentioned San Diego, uh, John, and I had a season of life in San Diego, and it was a transform transformative season for me. Um, I spent some time actually homeless in San Diego, uh, battled depression, suicidal thoughts, ultimately a suicide attempt on my life. And on the backside of that, I discovered something powerful. I discovered that we are the catalysts, right? We are the catalyst of, of the results in our, in our lives, both good and bad. And so that rose a question. It's like, well, if we have this ability, where does it come from? I started studying, I wanted to understand humanity, like I wanted to understand me as a person better. So I started studying things like uh, Catholicism and, and Buddhism and different religions and Scientology and all these different things, right? And through it, I started like, I just stumbled into this world of self-development. And as I stumbled into that world, I started studying successful people. And I noticed that there was one pattern that was consistent. All successful humans that are documented anyway that I came across, they all have this one thing in common. They have a powerful morning routine. Now, their morning routine can happen at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Beyonce, who performs late at night, doesn't go to bed till 6 o'clock in the morning. Her morning routine, right, what she does in the first hour to two hours of the day is part of her success formula. And so as I studied this more and more, I thought, well, I probably need to work on my morning routine because I didn't have a consistent morning routine that tapped into mind, body, and spirit. And so I started testing out all these different aspects of different people's morning routines. You know, Tony Robbins says, take right. a cold shower every day. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll take a cold shower every day. No, no, <laughs> that was not good. No, I did not like that. Mm -hmm. That did not, it revived, like, it made me mad. It made me angry. It did not make me happy to take a cold shower. So I tested all these different components. And ultimately, I put together a five-step process that I applied in my life and made a massive impact in my life. Then I started teaching it, wrote a little book about it. And now we've been able to help millions of people all around the world change the way they start their day. Yeah, and and it's interesting, Glenn, because uh, you know people go, oh, you know, about routine. When I get up, that all sounds difficult and all of that. But you already have a routine, right? I mean, you oh, have yeah. maybe a chaotic one, it may be a scattered one, it may be whatever. But you already have a routine, so really, it's changing. It's not suddenly doing something brand new. I mean, you do already have a routine. Yeah, that's correct, right? And so the way we say it is, if you change the way you start your day, it'll make a massive impact in your life. 
And I'm like the people you just talked about. I'm like, and that sounds like, I don't want to be complicated. I don't want it to be hard. And so what we put together, uh, what I put together in my life, and then we've put together now uh, to distribute, it's it's very simple process. It's five steps. Step one is never hit the snooze button. There's a lot of science behind this. Step two is don't touch your phone first thing in the morning, which is what you had just alluded to. <laughs> uh, you're now handing over your mental and spiritual faculties when you do that. Step three is gratitude and goals. Write down 10 things that you're thankful for. Write down your goals for the day, the week, the month, and long term. Step four is to take care of the physical. And I don't care. I don't care what you do, but like an object in motion stays in motion. Mm -hmm. An object at rest stays at rest. So walk, crawl, do yoga, uh, go golfing, play basketball. Like, I don't care. Just get moving, right? Take mm -hmm. care of the physical. And then step five is really the key. Once you've done these four things, right? You didn't hit the snooze, so you got to win there. You didn't touch your phone, right? So you got to win there. You wrote down your gratitude, so you're grounded, but you're also reaching, stretching for your dreams through your goals. You take care of yourself physically. Well, you've now generated this powerful, positive energy. You now want to release that out into the universe. So step five is to send out an encouraging message. Hmm. And, and that could be send it out in a Facebook message. You could put a sticky note on the mirror for your spouse. You can whisper into your kids' ears. You can shoot somebody a text. But you want to release this positive energy out into the universe. And what's crazy is what ends up happening when you do this is not only does it make a positive impact on the person you sent the message to, but it ends up coming back, mm. right? And it ends up fueling you with this positivity as well, which is the fuel that we can lead into the storms of the day, like politics and all the other crap that we're going to run into as the day goes on. So those yeah. five simple steps, we make it really easy and uh, it really makes a difference. Yeah, and and what and just like you said, I mean, what I love about your your system there is the is the simplicity of it, but also that that idea of by you you focus on yourself for a moment, you get all of this, and then you release it out there. So it's not like you're just disappearing into yourself. You're 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 doing that, but then you're reconnecting with the world in a very positive manner. Yeah, it's super important. You know, uh, John, there's this story of the three little pigs. I talk about this <laughs> on stage sometimes. People think <laughs> they'll pay me, you know, big money for a keynote and I'll go out there and tell the story of the three little pigs. But what's interesting in the story of the three little pigs, uh, for those that, that, that don't know it, there's three pigs. There's a wolf coming, which is a storm, right? And mm -hmm. the wolf's coming to eat the pigs. One pig big builds a house made out of straw. One pig builds a house made out of wood. And one pig builds a house made out of brick, right? And the big bad wolf comes, blows down the one out of straw, blows down the one out of wood, but cannot blow down the one out of brick. And what's interesting is in the story, the second to the last page of the story, it shows the wolf running off and it shows all three pigs in the house that are mm. made out of brick. All three. So the one pig that decided to take the time to build foundationally right, was able to rescue his brothers, who he loves and cares for, mm -hmm. that weren't willing to do that work. So what I mm -hmm. tell people all the time is the morning routine is your opportunity to build foundationally so that you can protect your family, your loved ones, the ones that aren't willing to do the work, you can protect them from those storms. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And and on your on your step too about this, the don't touch your phone, right? I mean, this one. Yeah. How do you how do you help people even do that? Because it's like people are so addicted to it now. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I remember somebody re recently said to me, "We're practically cyborgs already because we're never we're never without this connected right. to something. So we're almost attached. So how do you help people get over? Because it is such a powerful addiction." Yeah. So turning off your notifications is really the first part. I, I actually do use my phone first thing. I shouldn't say first thing in the morning, but I do use my phone. I use it to play instrumental music with right. no words. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what I tell people is if you can't, like, you just have to have this thing close or in your hand, then let's at least utilize it in a way that it's going to serve you, but avoid notifications. The social media, the email, the text messages, um, all, all of that stuff, 
that's the stuff we don't want, right? We don't even want music with words because that can influence our thoughts. It can influence the direction. It can create influence us negatively. So what I recommend to people, turn off your notifications because I use my phone as an alarm, right? Sure. But turn off your notifications and then have a routine that allows you to tap into the, the, the tool that it is without the negative sides. But I also remind people, John, every time mm -hmm. I say, what did you used to do first thing in the morning before you had a phone? What did you, mm -hmm. what did you, you, what was the thing you used to do? I'll ask you, what did you used to do first before you had a phone? I, to be honest, I would just, I would just get up and contemplate. I mean, seriously, I mean, literally like probably have something to drink and contemplate life. Well, and that's, that's, I think there's one part that you probably are not sharing and it's because it's a little private, but most of us used to go pee. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's right. Right? You wake up in the morning and you go pee. Now we're so addicted to our phones that most people don't even go to the thinking back. They're on their phone before they pee. And uh, so I like to remind people of that because it gives them a good uh, keen awareness of how infiltrated into who we are these phones have become. Mm -hmm. And it's a good trigger. So when you wake up in the morning and you have to go to the bathroom first, go to the don't jump on the phone, pee first, and then that leads you into where you can start creating better habits around your phone. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point because even those who maybe um, you know don't even remember life without cell phones, everybody realizes that. Yeah, hang on a second, maybe I am doing that. That's that's right. a that's a great one. The other thing too, Glenn, is your third one is that gratitude and goals. But just talk to me about the power of of writing down what you're grateful for because again, I mean, we live in a very in a strange world. We're bombarded all the time with negativity. You know, sure. we tend as humans to focus on the negative. How how you know what is the power of actually writing down your gratitude yeah it's actually interesting um studies show that almost every adult has been told at some point in their life to write their goals right mm -hmm. everyone knows they should write their goals and yet 87 percent of at least americans in the study i read 87 percent do not write their goals and it's like why is that why is it that everyone knows they should, mm -hmm. and yet most don't? So I started looking into that, and I realized writing goals can actually be a very negative experience. I wish I had a bigger house. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more money. I wish I was better looking. This can actually create a negative response. And so most people retreat from that. They're like, man, you know, this writing goals thing feels icky. It's gross. Yeah. I don't like it. So they retreat from it. Whereas I found if we start with gratitude, right? I am grateful that I have a roof over my head. I am grateful that my bills are paid. I am grateful that I woke up today because there are 77,000 people that did not. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get a bigger house one day. Yeah. And I'm going to make more money one day. And I'm going to work out and lose 15 pounds, right? Now the gratitude becomes fuel that turns our goals into a positive energy. And when we turn those goals into something positive, now we can write them and we can chase them and we can seek them from a positive space versus a negative space and be more consistent with it. So gratitude for me, I have learned, is the fuel that allows us to chase our dreams, understanding how far we've come, mm. how good we have it, and then going out to search for more. Yeah, and, and what I love about that is that idea of how far you've come, what you've achieved, because I think we're, we're sometimes we're terrible at that. Like we can look at all the things we don't have or we want more of or whatever, and or we feel terrible. Oh, we haven't achieved much or whatever. But then when you take, if you take that moment to take a look back and go, look what you've, look what you've achieved. Look what you've overcome. Look where you are today. Look what you already have. And as you said, once you do that, it kind of forces your a mindset change. Yeah, you know, and a lot of times people say, well, Glenn, I have nothing to be grateful for. I'm yeah. like, have you seen the video of the kid? There's this kid, I think he's in Turkey or Istanbul, something like that. This kid is paralyzed. His right leg is paralyzed. And he gets up every morning and he walks miles and miles and miles to pick up pieces of plastic 
that he can then take to the recycling center. He picks up trash, mm -hmm. takes it to the recycling center, and in exchange, he makes about 20 cents a day. Mm -hmm. He'll go out there for four or five hours with one leg paralyzed for 20 cents a day. And he takes the 20 cents a day, gives it to his family. And, he, and, and in the video, he says, I'm hoping to save up one day to be able to get a backpack. Just wants a backpack mm -hmm. to carry the plastic that he's collecting. <laughs> on the beach or on the, on the land, right? And so for those of you in that space, I understand sometimes life can seem challenging or difficult. Mm -hmm. Taking a moment to shift our perspective and understanding that we've been given an incredible gift. What a time to be alive. We have yeah. things like air conditioning. That's amazing, right? We have things like this where we can connect yeah. with people all around the world digitally and look them face to face and have amazing conversations. Dude, do you remember encyclopedias? If oh, you yeah. wanted information, <laughs> you had to go, you had to buy, you had to save up to buy the letter Q, right? And you, <laughs> and you debated whether you wanted the letter Q or not. There's not a whole lot of Q words, right? And now we have this thing called Google. We have access to more information. They said more information has gone on the internet in the last 12 months than in the history of all time combined. Wow. Wow. So what an amazing time to be alive. And though there are challenges, there's sure. no doubt about that. There's plenty to be grateful for. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a, and it's a great story. And people should remind themselves, too, about you know, your situation and, and where you are and what you have. And then, like you said, even, even if you're waking up every day, that's a pretty good achievement in, in, in and of yeah. itself. Yeah. And the thing about the, the physical activity, I, you know, this is sometimes, you know, people, especially if they're not used to doing physical activity or they've drifted away over a long time, it appears very daunting to them. But I, I just tell you, I did interview one guy who he said, seriously overweight couch potato and he made up his mind one day he was going to run a marathon and everybody said he was mad and so what he did is he went out on the first day and he walked for five minutes that was it and then he walked it like 10 minutes and anyway long story short he built it up over time and he ran and he runs marathons so when people look at physical activity you don't have to dive in and iron man level immediately you know there are there are baby steps you can take right yeah, and there's always a way to find something that you enjoy, right? Like, yeah, I think we 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 live in a society where somebody gets a result, right? They get a result, and then they say, "Here's how I got the result, and you should do this too." We're we're a very should society. Yeah. <laughs> you should eat vegetarian. You should be gluten free. You should be on the Atkins diet. You should do 75 hard. You should, you should, you should, you should. And the reality is there's 7.8 billion people on this planet and every one of them has a unique genetic makeup mm -hmm. that respond differently to different things. And so instead of telling each other what we should do, I ask that individuals explore what brings them joy Mm. and choose to do more of that. I used to, my, my workouts used to be playing basketball in the morning what? at 6.30 a.m. with the guys from work. Gosh, I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. It was so incredible, right? It was strenuous. It was a lot of, the heart was pumping. I was breathing hard. But when my heart's pumping and breathing hard running on a treadmill, I don't enjoy that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't enjoy it. And so... There's ways to get the body in motion by finding things that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be a negative experience. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that's a great point for people. Just underline is like physical activity does not have to be a negative. You don't have to do something you hate because if you're going to do something you hate, you're never going to do it and you're never going to stick right. at it. So fine. <laughs> so maybe it is just a, a simple walk in your neighborhood, something, anything to start and just like, you know, reconnect your physiology. Um, the yeah, last thing maybe, maybe you don't like walking, right? But you yeah. do like your spouse a lot. Yeah. Right. So, so instead of saying, I'm going to go for a walk by myself and that's miserable. Instead, say, you know what? My wife and I are going to go on a 15-minute date every day. And, ah. it's, and, and, and it's a time where, where we're going to hold hands and we're going to walk around the neighborhood and just have a conversation, right? When you, when you package it like that, that's like, oh, wow. You know, yeah. I, I love my wife. I would love <laughs> 15 minutes to hold hands with my wife without any of my eight kids climbing all over us, right? 
it'd be beautiful. So we're still walking, but mm-hmm. it's not, we're going for a walk. It's we're going on a date. Yeah. And shift it to something that brings you joy. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, all about shifting perspective and just on your final one, you talked about releasing. Oh yeah. The, the sending out of an encouraging message. Mm-hmm. So um, really what was interesting is as I was studying a bunch of different religious texts, I found something really fascinating. I found that uh, they talk about this thing called karma and mm-hmm. in, 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 in one book. And then there's another book that says what you give out comes back tenfold, right? Like, and all of these historic uh, texts, they talk about this energetic exchange of what we release and how that comes back and how it expands as it comes back. So then I studied energy more and I found when it comes to energy, it cannot be created, nor does it dissipate. It can only be converted. This is why we have windmills that capture the wind, turn it into electricity, right? So putting all those together, I'm like, oh, wow. So if we release, send out a positive, encouraging message, it has no choice but to ultimately come back. Now, it's not a self-serving act, right? I'm not like, I'm going to send John a message because (laughs) I want something back. It's not how it works. But it is the, the bonus that ends up happening. So I send out five encouraging messages every day. And sometimes it's people I haven't talked to in years, yeah. um, a Facebook message, an Instagram message, uh, a sticky note. And what's crazy is I'll have people message me back and say, I really needed this today. Mm. Like, you can't imagine the timing. I had this going on and this going on. And your message was just really a ray of light, right? And that in itself makes you feel, you start to puff up. So it's a fun thing, but you earn it by doing the other four steps first. Right, right. Perfect. Well, uh, all of Glenn's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Glenn, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, yeah. Husband to one, father to eight, host of Hashtag Rise and Grind Daily Morning Show, and the owner of the 800% Elite Automotive Club. We do training and consulting in the automotive space for owners and GMs. And then as far as the show, it's motivation, education, inspiration, celebrity interviews, and thought-provoking conversations. We're live at 5.30 a.m. Eastern time, but don't worry. You can catch us on replay, YouTube, podcast, all those places as well. Perfect. So instead of hitting your snooze button, uh, maybe you tune into the- uh, That's right. I highly suggest it. (laughs) <laughs> not first thing yeah, yeah. first do your gratitude and goals and all of that and then come watch me absolutely listen <laughs> thanks very much glenn thank you for watching and listening and I'll see you all again soon thanks john appreciate you